How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Shh. Don't. Don't zing. Okay, give me two seconds. Why is it when we go live, my mouse never seems to want to work correctly? <laughs> well, while you're while you're doing that, I figured the topic that we would discuss today. We are live, by is... the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just trying to to get this to work. So anyway, hi everybody, welcome to live community. We are back with Cheryl. I love, and I'm gonna let Cheryl get started while I work on getting our screen perfect because I'm lame and it doesn't work that way all the time for me lately. But in my awesomeness of overcoming my lameness, I'm going to let Cheryl take it because we are learning about being fit over 50. And last week or two weeks ago, Cheryl taught us that it does not have to involve pain, which I am totally down for because I'm not a big fan of pain. And so today we're going to continue down this path of, of learning about that. So I'm going to let Cheryl introduce herself and explain exactly um, what we're going to do today. Cheryl, welcome to Live Community. Well, thank you so much for having me again, Marianne. It's a delight to be here. And I just want to let the listeners know that Marianne is the least lame person that I have ever met. She's a rock star. So um, I just had to throw that in there. Everything that you've done for the hip senior community has been absolutely amazing. And I don't know when you sleep. Um, I don't know either, but I'll figure it out when I find out. I'll let you know. Okay, that sounds good. So everybody, I am... Um, of course, my name is Cheryl I love. I am uh, a dancer, an author, a martial artist. I am also a recovering physical therapist. I had my own private practice for 18 years where I provided my clients with alternative um, physical therapy and uh, basically, you know, wrote a book about it. So I am considered to be, um, if not an expert, pretty darn close regarding fitness over 50. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about today is, you know, we did a little bit of an intro last time two weeks ago, but what I really wanted to focus on today is posture. And I know everybody's probably groaning and it's like, oh no, it's really not that sexy of a topic, but posture is so important to our health and well-being as we mature. I hate to say get, you know, older or age, but let's face it, we're always aging from the minute we're born, we start aging. So Posture is so important for a multitude of reasons, and I did describe it last time as our bodies being pretty much um, kind of like the foundation of a house. We have to have a strong foundation where all the plumb lines are accurate so we can then start putting on the bricks in the mortar so the foundation would be able to support us. So it drives me a little bit crazy when I hear from people that, well, you're supposed to be falling apart because you're getting older, and that is not true. Our body is designed to be able to support us during the entire course of our lifetime. We, where we get into trouble is when some of those natural plumb lines go a little off kilter, putting unnecessary stress and strain on our joints, our muscles, and the rest of our soft tissues. And that's when things start to fall apart. So it's not because we're getting older. It's just because we have been living longer. Sure. And go ahead. Do you have a question, Marianne? I do not, but... but... I'm going to hit start broadcast. We are we are live on Facebook. You're now every, broadcasting your webinar. Everything is being All recorded. attendees are in listen-only mode. 
but I'm this pro- webinar is being recorded. But I'm proving my lameness right now. It's Monday morning, guys, or Monday afternoon. I am so sorry. Cheryl, forgive me for... Anyway, continue on. I will edit this part out because I did not hit that. Was, I saw at the bottom it said start broadcast. And I went, oh, crud. But we are recording live on, on Facebook, so we're good. So continue. I'm sorry. I just wanted hey. you to understand why it was going to be speaking to us. Okay. All right. So again, let's talk about posture. And I know a lot of people are, they have hangups about their posture. It's like, oh no, I've always had bad posture. I've always been told that I have terrible posture. I've always tried to fix my posture and I just can't do it. And there's actually an easier way where we can enhance our posture so we can look more healthy, more vibrant, and even more youthful all the way through the course of our lifetime because nothing makes us look older. And I see, you know, already Marianne is working on her posture Mm, when I say these things. (laughs) So a lot of times what we're told is, you know, to, to stand up, you know, throw your shoulders back, chest out, you know, pinch your buttocks together. And you just can't stand like that for very long, let alone walk and breathe. But think about it, when you are in that, it's not a natural position, it's not a natural posture, so it is impossible to move. So we're gonna cover a couple of different ideas today of how you can get your posture to be as as healthy and as beautiful and elegant as you want it to be. So before we get on to that, I do want to talk about some of the other health issues that you can have if your posture starts to be rounded, that forward head position, it's almost like your body is starting to collapse and implode on itself. What does that do? Not only does it put unnecessary strain and stress and pressure on all the joints of our body, of course our spine, it collapses our thoracic area and think of what's going on in your thoracic area. That's where we have our lungs, our heart, the circulation starts to get um, compromised. So we're not breathing as well. We're not having um, as much circulation as we should. So that's one of the things that really starts to impact our, our physical health in more ways than just, oh, my posture is not good or it's bad. So that's why we really wanna be as functional as possible to be able to have all of our internal organs have the room and the capacity to function the way that they need to. So. You're probably right now shifting in your chair, making like little adjustments, thinking, oh my gosh, I hope she can't see me. Um, But don't worry about it. We have a couple of really good ways, easy ways to find what I like to call picture perfect posture. And as far as posture is concerned, people think of it as a static position. Okay, I stack everything up and I'm gonna stay like this for the rest of the day. Good luck with that. Um, What we like to call, I'm also a Feldenkrais practitioner, and what we like to call in Feldenkrais is it's not posture, it's acture, because it's always has some kind of action going on with it, unless, of course, you're lying back in a recliner. So what does this mean? It means that you are stacked so perfectly on your skeletal structure that you could be able to move in any direction in a moment's notice, that you wouldn't have to do some major adjustments to be able to stand up from a chair or to be able to get up off the floor. We did talk about the floor a little bit last time. So I just wanna focus on bits and pieces of posture, things that you can do and start working on just right away and take a lot of the pressure off of yourself, okay? Think of it as a game. Think of it um, not as, oh my gosh, this is something I have to do, but just think of it as a little exploration, learning a little bit more about your body, about what it can do and how you feel when you start to make even minor changes in it. So you can start with just lifting the breastbone, okay? And let me, don't, don't start moving yet but I call it the eyes of the breastbone. So a lot of time the eyes of the breastbone are looking down, again, collapsing our chest. It might not be a huge collapse, but it is making a big impact on the rest of our body. So I think I have little eyes on my breastbone and I just lift those eyes up so I can see where I'm going. And you can see the difference that it makes in my shape of my chest and where my shoulders are. So even if you take your fingertips and put them lightly over your breastbone, 
and just sink a little bit like, oh, I'm looking at my computer or I'm looking at my phone and then think, wait a minute, those eyes are the breastbone. They really need to lift up so they can see where you're going and just start to gently lift. All you're doing is lifting your breastbone and see how that ripples all the way through the rest of your body, including how it's starting to get you a little bit more up on your pelvis. I feel like I'm sitting more on my, what we call ischial tuberosities. That's I've had word. people call them the butt bones. So those are the bones that we need to be sitting on. A lot of times what we do is we're sitting behind those sit bones, rounding our lower back, putting more pressure on our low back, and again, impeding our digestion. But if we can lift the eyes of the breastbone and we're up and we're sitting on the bones of the pelvis, we have a pretty good start here of where to begin for finding our posture. So I believe that it's the easiest way to get started to do this is by sitting on a firm chair. If you're on a couch or a recliner, that's not gonna work. We really need the firmness of a nice firm chair underneath us so we can feel, get that what we call proprioceptive input into the rest of our body rather than just squishing around on a soft surface that's really not supporting us. So get on right now. I am, I have some pillows behind me, but what you might want to do to get yourself on your sit bones is go ahead and put some pillows behind you to support your lower back. There is not a chair that I have ever seen in my entire life that has been made for anybody, let alone everybody. So if you can't change the chair, then change something about it. You can raise the floor. If you're short, if you have short legs and your feet aren't really even touching the floor, you can put pads underneath your feet and that'll put you in a neutral position. Again, easier to find your posture. Last time I talked about getting um, like knee pads, those knee supports that you use for gardening, those little pads, they're about, I think about five eighths of an inch thick. You can use those and use a series of them to get yourself in the right position. But your legs should be, your legs to the floor, your hips to the floor should be making 90 degree angles. So your knees should not be above 90 degrees because that's gonna slump you. If they can't be below 90 degrees, that's going to overextend you. So you really want to be in a neutral position. And putting um, pads underneath your feet are going to help you do that. If you're a very tall person, then you might have to put pads underneath your bottoms to sit on pads to elevate your pelvis so you can be in a neutral position. So all of this is what we're doing is to find that really neutral position where you could sit there and be completely comfortable for extended periods of time if you have to sit and at the same time be able to pop up off that chair without having to make a lot of adjustments to be able to get there. So if anybody has any questions at this point, please feel free to shoot them over. Yep. Um, I would love to address that for you. I do have a pause for a second. Um, we have a few viewers on Facebook. Thank you for joining us today. And um, in the comments, I put in a uh, link to a form to fill out to win uh, Cheryl's book. Cheryl, tell them real fast the name of your book, The Warrior. I, I gave away your Ninja Warrior book. <laughs> okay, so I do have two books. And I think which book are you talking about for the giveaway? Is it the Fit no, and Flexible or the, the Ninja? ninja. <laughs> it's the Ninja? Yeah, because I think it's oh. an awesome story. and. And a, a very um, amazing story of you. And so Thanks. I thought that would be inspiring for people to want to do more. It really is a fun story. Um, it is a roller coaster ride. So the title of the book is The Reluctant Ninja, How a Middle-Aged Princess Became a Warrior Queen. And it, it's really, it's a, a story of uh, triumph over tragedy. It chronicles my um, training in an ancient Japanese martial art called Nimpo Taijutsu, and how I began training in this martial art at the tender young age of 47. I did not go willingly, hence the reluctant ninja, and I was kind of dragged into the world of um, men and martial arts, kicking and screaming and not in a good way. Um, so finally, my, my teacher, my sensei, was actually my acupuncturist before he became my teacher. 
And it took him three years to convince me to get on the mat and start training with him. For three years, I kept saying no until he finally wore me down. And I said, okay, I will take a few classes just to prove to you how much I'm going to hate it. And then I'll quit. Well, 10 years later, I became my teacher's first female black belt. In 20 years of teaching, he never had a woman, a female, achieve such a high rank. And the timid, terrified, traumatized, little middle-aged ballerina was the one that broke that glass ceiling. So it's an amazing story. It really is. And um, it'll make you laugh. It'll make you cry. It is full of really funny stories and really heartbreaking stories and stories that are nothing but spirit. But it'll prove to you that it doesn't matter how old you are. You can do anything that you set your mind to. And it has been, for me, it was a beautiful, um, you know, not a segue, but another way of finding, learning even more about posture, about movement. So even with the physical therapy and the Feldenkrais background, this was just another level to really enhance that level of understanding of the human body, let alone the human spirit. So yes, fill out the form and uh, see if you get the book. Fill out the form. Maybe next week we'll we'll do another your other book. <laughs> That's possible. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so fill out the form, uh, win the book, be part of uh, of our group with us. We're going to create a, a group um, for on Facebook for people that want to learn more, maybe uh, take a virtual class with us, uh, be involved, tell their stories, learn some more information as well. Uh, so that's in the works also. So we're hoping to create a fit over 50 uh, type of group uh, with Cheryl as well, because I am down for learning how to have better posture and how to be more fit as I age. I'm 53 and I'm not as fit as um, nearly as I would like to be. So I am down for this. I hope you guys will join us as well. So Cheryl, continue. Excellent. Okay, so I am going to give a few more tips of fun ways that you can improve your posture. One of them is it might make you laugh, it might make you roll your eyes, you might think I'm kidding, but just put a book on your head. It's the oldest trick in the book, but I'm bum. Among models, beauty queens, that's the easiest way to improve your posture. Um, if that is, oh yeah, it's a paper. It's a paperback, but that still works, right? It's the only one I have handy. Well, that's okay. It, it really does work. I have several paperbacks here. Oh, this is another one. Breath, since we're talking about posture and the ability to breathe. So if you just put a book on your head and let it balance there, I mean, feel what that does. You cannot have that forward head position. And it's almost like, okay, since we're talking to the over 50 crowd here, that uh, I'm sure everybody remembers um, Fred Flintstone when we were kids, the, um, the cartoon. Yep. And I always would tell my clients, it's almost like Dino. You know, when Dino got in the little car and all of a sudden his head was so, you know, his neck was so long, he just popped through the roof of the car. That's what we're trying to do is we're feeling that little, that pressure against our head really encourages us to lift into it. Again, that's proprioceptive input. So I can sit here. And pretty much all day, if I wanted to sit all day, which I wouldn't, but I can sit here all day with this book on my head. And, you know, it's not going to be annoying to me. It's not going to be, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge, but not that much. So I want to make the challenge a little bit harder. You know, how would I do that? I would stand up. So once you get to the point where you can balance with a book on your head, then get up off the chair and it'll probably fall the first time, maybe. Or 10 times. Well, maybe. You never know <laughs> until you try it. So there you go. That's your challenge is to try it. And then once you can get up off the chair, start walking around with a book on your head. It gives you an amazing gait pattern. It's very, very, I don't want to say sultry or sexy, but maybe it is. Because typically when we walk, our gait is kind of like this lurching gait. It's a series of forward falls. If when you have the book on your head, then you start to, instead of initiating with your forward body, your upper body to walk, you start initiating from your pelvis. That keeps your shoulders above your pelvis, your head completely in line with your spine where it should be. 
And it gives you a walk that's not only very smooth and elegant, but it's also confident. I like to call it the ninja walk. When I was first learning it, they were saying it's kind of like the um, runway model. And to see these big guys trying to imitate uh, a runway model was really worth it. That was worth the month's tuition because it was hilarious. But when you move from your pelvis, you move from your hips. What you're doing is you're actually staying grounded. Your posture is exactly where it needs to be. You're not putting any strain or excess strain on your knees. Your feet are able to move a little bit more easily rather than that falling forward gait. Right. It helps keep your shoulders back. It's just a really wonderful feeling. And so I'm going to encourage you to try that too. So with the book on your head, as you walk, it's really hard to do your typical forward falling gait. So start practicing walking with a book on your head. And I'm going to give you another tip, which is really kind of fun too. We all go to the grocery store. I personally hate it, but I, I have to. I have oh. my, order, my groceries delivered. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Well, see, I thought about doing that many times, but I'm such a control freak that even though I hate the grocery store, I'm the one that wants to pick out my produce. I'm sorry. You know, I, I, I just it. I had really good luck with that, though. So I am maybe try it once. I don't know. Yeah, here I am talking about trying new things. So, OK, I'll challenge, challenge accepted. But I, I do have that. one other one other thing before we move into that real fast. I've noticed that with the book on my head where my computer screen is that that I'm looking down quite a bit. So I'm guessing that that's something I should adjust as well as since I sit at my computer and work so much that in order for me to have better posture at my desk, mm -hmm. that my screen should be eye level instead of me having to look down, correct? Absolutely. Okay, so that was brilliant. I'm so glad you brought that up because what we're doing with just these little um, explorations with the book on the head, you know, maybe adjusting the chair with pads underneath your bottom or underneath your feet, all of this is improving our self-awareness. So it's activating the neural pathways in our brain that are saying, oh, wow, okay, this isn't comfortable. I do need to make a small change. So that is absolutely brilliant. So you don't have to change everything all at once. It, those, those little small incremental changes really add up. So don't think that, okay, I have to do these few things and I have to have perfect posture tomorrow. No, it's not. It doesn't really work that way. But it's those little pieces that um, self-discovery that I think so are know, some of important. your monitors move up and down. You may not know it, but some mm -hmm. of them, they, they tilt, they, they turn sometimes and some of them literally move up and down to make that height adjustment for you. So mm -hmm. instead mm -hmm. of piling a bunch of books underneath, which I don't think my, mine tilts, I don't think it moves up and down, but I'm going to try, but it'll mess up my camera right now. So this will be after we get off. Yeah, so you don't want to do it now. We don't want to get vertigo. Um, but I actually have a nifty little stand that somebody had told me about, a woman I had taken um, right toward, at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, how to look good on camera or how to do, you know, Zoom calls and stuff. And it's like, oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm a baby boomer. I didn't know anything. So I was starting from scratch. But this is a nifty little um, stand that you can raise and lower and tilt. It's a, I think it's a Wavo is what it's it's called. It's a Wavo, I just got it, of course, online. And you can make the adjustments to the height that you want and the tilt that you want. And the bottom has like, I'm gonna, moving my camera, sorry about that, or I'm jiggling, but it doesn't overheat. So it has little vents on the bottom of it. So if you're on your computer all day long, it's not gonna overheat because it's got that vent at the, the bottom too. So I, I like that. It works for me. That's like for a laptop, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a laptop. Oops. Okay. Alrighty, so we got the, the book on the head. So this is another little tip, and I got this from martial arts. And I think, especially the ladies, I think you're going to love it because it's really kind of fun. But guys, do try that that as well because it is fun so we all go to the grocery store except for marianne and she's going to try and wean me off of the grocery store too but when we go to the store and there you've got your grocery cart right so you start pushing it and well it's no big deal then you start putting 
stuff in the cart, the cart gets a little bit heavier. So you're pushing a little harder. As we're pushing, what are we pushing with? Typically, it's our upper body. So we're again, we're leaning forward and we're pushing that cart. And as we, it gets heavier and heavier, we're leaning forward even more. Instead of pushing with your arms, drive the cart with your hips. So when the cart is empty, you get your cart. Make sure it's not one with a, a broken wheel. I always get one of those. I don't know why. So just put the hands, your hands gently on the cart. And instead of thinking you're pushing the cart, just leave your hands there becoming one with the cart and start to move the cart by just using your hips. So you're going back to that walk that you practice with a book on your head. Something really interesting happens when you do this. And then of course, when you're filling up your cart, it gets a little bit heavier, making you a little bit more aware of moving from your hips rather than pushing with your arms. Hmm. And something really fascinating happens because when you walk that way, again, it's the same type of walk that you do with the book on your head. It gives you such a presence. People notice you. And I had one of my clients who was a very tiny, tiny woman. She was in her early 40s. She looked like a teenager. And she told me, she says, you know, I just disappear that nobody sees me, you know, and, and everywhere I go. So I taught her this little trick. I said, try it at the grocery store. I could tell she didn't believe me, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. So she came back about a week later and she said, oh my goodness, it was amazing. Because I told her when you walk like that and you're in a crowded aisle, crowded grocery store, people automatically get out of the way yep. because they see you, they notice you. It's not that you're being threatening, but you're present and they can see it. It's an energy around you. So she said she tried it and she said it was amazing. She said it was like the parting of the Red Seas that everybody moved out of her way and everybody looked at her and smiled. And she said it was, she, she thought she was making it up. She thought she was imagining it. So she went back to her typical way of pushing the cart and boom, she disappeared again. Wow. So not only is that really good for healthy hips, healthy spine, healthy posture, it's also good for personal safety. Because when people notice you, that you are looking around, that you are truly present, that's the ninja warrior coming out in me, you are less of a target. You look stronger and more powerful. People think of strong and powerful as being, Hur. you know, that's not it. It's just being present, aware of your surroundings, and being grounded, and those things are all little tools that are gonna help you achieve that. Cheryl, I saw on social media recently, this woman, she was probably on TikTok, was showing people how to put groceries in their car and be aware of their surroundings while they were doing this. Um, and if I can go back and find the link, I will. Um, but th she was like, you know, like, you know, don't just like take your groceries and put them in here, you know, doing whatever, you know, it's, it was literally keep your eye on what's going on around you so that you do not become a target. And cause I mean, I can't tell you how many friends I know who has parents, especially elderly mothers who have had their purses stolen or have been attacked mm -hmm. in parking lots. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm sure they were not paying as close of attention um, because that's what those people are looking for, right? Or people that are just, they're paying attention to their, to the kids or their grandchildren or, you know, pushing that cart, like you said, or any of those mm -hmm. things and not paying attention to the people that are surrounding them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, parking lots, especially <laughs> be really, really aware of what's going on. And even where I park, and for some reason, I, I never like to park by a van. You know, for some reason, I don't know why. Maybe it was some of the stories I've heard as I was training in, in martial arts, and I still do train. Um, but I'm always really careful of where I'm parking and who's around me. And that's a, the story that you told. You know, I, I love that TikTok, you know, video. And I, yeah. you know, I hope you can find it yeah. because that is really important. And one of the women, young woman, I know that I, I used to take ballet class with and she posted something on Facebook to the person who, you know, stole my purse while I was trying to get my baby girl in the car. And it's like, there you go. That's exactly what they're looking for. She was so preoccupied with her baby girl as she should be. But at the same time, you really have to be aware of your surroundings at the same time as well, or the purse 
instead of just leaving it in the cart or wherever it is, uh, put it around. I always um, put mine like around my shoulder, not just one shoulder, but you know, over the opposite shoulder. So it's right there. A lot of little things like that you can do to keep yourself safe. Even when you're in the grocery store, I found like when I don't cake my purse anymore, but, um, but when I did, I would remember because I don't go to the grocery store, but when I did, <laughs> I would put my purse, I would take a wet wipe and wipe off like, you know, the seat because keep in mind, like when people put their babies there and like in diapers, wipe the seats, the little slight seat things first before you put anything there, especially like vegetables and stuff, by the way. Oh, um, yeah. Some people do gross things and, um, and diapers are gross, by the way. Um, and so you want to make sure you clean that, but then I would put my purse down there and, or I would fold it up, right. And wipe the metal put my purse in there and then I would wrap the seatbelt for the child like around my handle of my purse multiple times so that if they were going to steal my purse they had to work to get my purse they had to undo it and unwrap it and whatever and this guy watched me one time and he went that is he worked there he was like that is genius I've never seen anybody do that I'm like what Mm -hmm. So, but by the way, if Cheryl got attacked in a parking lot, she could kill some, kill some man with her legs. So <laughs> she's good. So let's keep learning from Cheryl about this. Yeah, I love that. And I love the fact that, okay, this was a problem and you solved it with the purse. I love that. I think that's great. Um, I, I won't tell you what my husband used to do. Well, okay, I will. He <laughs> used to just take his wallet and toss it and leave it on that little seat, at, you know, where you would put a baby. And I'm like, Michael, put your wallet in your pocket. That'd be and one he goes, of the well, easiest gonna... to snag. <laughs> yeah, he says, I'm, I'm gonna need it. So, and I, I just, I would yell at him all the time. It's like, put it in your, do not leave it there. Well, he went to the grocery store, this was several years ago, even before COVID, and someone stole his wallet right out of the car. Go figure. And I'm like, that is really weird. I can't believe anybody would do that. Well, I said, why don't you just wear, you know, wear a sign? Hey, steal my wallet. So yeah, awareness is the key to everything. Um, you know, being your health, your fitness, your personal safety, uh, everything. So, and that's something we can practice too, is practice training our awareness. And it's really not that hard to do. It's kind of fun and you can turn that into a game. So we could either save that for another day or we can segue into that. But I have one more really, really fun thing for posture. Let's do okay. That. Yep, yeah. And I almost did it today, but I thought, no, I would drive people crazy. I think I told you last time I have balls all over the, the girl cave down here, all those fit balls, exercise balls. Um, maybe it was somebody else that I told. But one of the best things you can do for your posture, and it's so easy. Ooh, before I say that, there's another really little known benefit that people don't realize that you get from working on your posture and having that postural alignment is your core muscles automatically start kicking in and start working. And that's another topic we're going to uh, discuss another time is how to get a strong core, strong core, um, strong abdominals. Start with your posture. So that gives you even more motivation to try some of these little, little tricks and tips. Especially Sitting like, on an exercise ball. Especially Go like ahead, if you have a baby, right? Like a grandchild. You want to be able to carry your baby around the the baby around or pick them up out mm-hmm. of the crib or any of that stuff. You not only need strong muscles in your arms and in your shoulders, but also your core to be able to hold your weight and this baby, right? Toddler. Mm-hmm. Actually, I think that the core strength is more important even than the arm strength. Right. And again, that's something that, you know, I've learned from martial arts, but it's something I kind of knew. But, you know, it, it's important to have strong arms, strong muscles. But if you don't have a strong core, then every time you do try and, you know, pick up your, your groceries, your grandchild, uh, then that's going to put wear and tear on your spine your because you don't have, have, have those muscles. I didn't mm-hmm. I so do that it's, again. It's a really, really important thing. You have to have core, strong core muscles. And it's not about getting down on the floor and doing sit-ups and crunches. Ugh, ugh, you know, I just hate that. Um, but so if you sit on an exercise ball, if you've never done it, I want you to please, please be careful because it's a little challenging to sit on a ball because it's a ball and it's moving. So if you have any issues with balance, um, if you are, you know, a little bit, uncertain, if you've never done it before, I would recommend either hire a physical therapist to get started or go to an exercise class, you know, especially for seniors, there's no shame in that. 
You just want to make sure that you are safe and you're not going to get hurt. So the exercise ball, again, you should be, when you sit on a ball, you should be in the same 90, 90 degree angle of the hips to knees and knees to floor. So you don't want your knees to be up higher than your hips or lower than your hips because that's going to muck up your alignment. But just sitting on the ball and the action of sitting on a ball is almost magical. It makes you feel like a kid again. But what it does, just sitting there and balancing on it, and when I say balance, I mean holding on to things. So I used to um, do some really crazy things on the ball. I still do sometimes. Like I'll, I'll just sit in a Buddha position with my legs crossed, sitting on the ball and balancing. But I always put the ball between like the recliner and the couch so I can reach out on both sides. So if I tip over, I'm falling onto something soft and I do have something to grab on to help rebalance me if I just feel like I'm tilting a little bit too much. So you do, safety is the key. When you get an exercise ball, uh, you want to make sure that you're using it in a safe place, no sharp objects around, don't do amazing cat tricks um, with the ball. I had a client who, whose son did that once and, of course, ruined the ball. Cat tricks. Um, so safety is the main thing that you want to keep in mind. But when you sit on it, and once you get comfortable on it, it's amazing because you're sitting on air. And it just feels so comfortable and so good. And it's really hard to have bad posture or poor posture when you're sitting on a ball because you'll fall off, you'll roll off. So it automatically just lines you up the way you need to be. It stacks your spine, your head. Otherwise, again, you won't be able to sit there. So it's an incredible tool. So it works your balance. It works your proprioception, which are those... Um, those nerve endings that tell you where we are in space and what you know your body is doing. It works your core and it just lights up your nervous system. So just sitting there on the ball does all of that. And then if you start to, once you're comfortable with it and you're ready to, you can start very gentle bouncing. And then it does all of the above, taking it to a higher level. It's just amazing. The things that you can do with a, an exercise ball is absolutely fascinating. And I think everybody should have a ball unless of course they can't get on it for some reason medically. And then for some reason, mine's in my closet down by my front door, not at my desk. So. Uh, yeah, that would probably it be. Yeah. The first step there for Marianne then would be to get the ball, <laughs> free the ball, get the ball out of her closet. Yeah. Yeah. I used to keep it in my living room to if for the rare times that I would stop and watch a TV show um, mm -hmm. that I would use that to watch TV on because instead of sitting in a recliner or whatever, I could sit there and, and just kind of get some extra core strengthening and exercise with my ball. So um, and then for a while I had it at my desk. And since I moved in here, for some reason, it is not. And it's been nine months. So, yeah, after we get oh. off, the first step I will be doing is going downstairs and getting my ball. Because I don't think it'll be good during like live sessions like this because you'll have me going all over the place. Yeah, I tried it once or twice and it just really didn't work because, you know, you can't help but move when you're on the ball. Yeah. And then you start bouncing around because it's really fun. And uh, yeah, so I worked at a clinic uh, with two chiropractors. They're very, very sweet. This is probably about 20 years ago. And the one chiropractor owned the, the, the clinic and he wanted to buy me a chair for my office. And I says, no, I don't use a chair. He says, you have to have a chair. I said, no, I sit on a ball and I sit on a ball all day long. And he bought me a chair anyway, never did use it. And we were having a meeting one time, one of our group meetings and the other um, chiropractor who was really, really funny. He says, I want to be like Cheryl. I'm going to sit on a ball too. And I said, are you sure about that? And he says, yeah. And so I'm thinking to myself, I wonder how long this is going to last because he never sat on the ball. So he brings the ball into the meeting room and, you know, we're all sitting there. I'm on the ball and he's on the ball. And about five minutes later, he's eh, 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 and he's moving around. And he was so uncomfortable. Finally, he looked at me and says, I don't know how you do this all day long. And he just tossed the ball. And I says, you don't start by sitting on it for an hour long meeting. You know, you just start a few minutes at a time. So for the listeners, if you get on the ball and you sit on it, you know, I would think sitting on it for three minutes would be just fine. So don't think that you have to sit on it for really long periods of time. Once you get used to it, once your body gets used to it, then you can start sitting on it for longer periods of time. I'm sure we've all seen pictures of those chair balls, ball chairs. 
that have the the base to it and the wheels underneath it do are those beneficial or does that counter react with the, no the i think those are actually really great um i've never used one because I didn't want to invest in the frame, but it does have like a backrest. So it's not really a backrest where you slump, it's a backrest where it will support you. So you can be on that chair probably a lot longer without getting fatigued because you will get tired sitting on a Swiss ball, or I call it a Swiss ball, an exercise ball. And you will definitely you know, fatigue and end up getting really sore. So that is a really good alternative. I would imagine that that would be a really good alternative for seniors that have carpet. Um, the reasoning I'm thinking is a, the extra support for the, for the back. Right. Um, and the, even though it has wheels, those wheels aren't going to slide on your carpet nearly as easily as that ball would slide and cause you to fall off. Um, so I think that would be an extra benefit for seniors to be able to use a chair like that versus just the ball, um, and still have that as well. Um, I could see that chair sliding very easily across like a laminate or a wood floor. Um, mm -hmm. so beware of, of that situation. Don't put yourself in harm's way, um, mm -hmm. with that either, but a ball would, would roll just as easily. So you're going to you know, if you have flooring that, that is otherwise slippery or whatever, you know, like I said, Cheryl said, work with a, somebody that's going to be able to help you figure out what your best solution for that is, whether it's putting like a yoga mat or something rubberized underneath between you and the floor, the ball on the floor or something so that you're not sliding as easily. Cause I could see, um, especially yeah. if you're older and you're in your core strength is pretty weak. Um, it's going to take some building up and some to make sure that you're doing this safely, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. And that's why I said, yeah, okay. um, consult with a physical therapist and get somebody to help you um, because it can be pretty dangerous. You can get, you can get badly injured. Um, and I'm not really sure, I'm not familiar enough with um, like the frame of the, the ball, the ball chair. So I don't know if it might even have locks on the wheels. I really that'd don't be, know. That'd yeah. be good. If not, they should. But maybe they do true. kind of like a wheelchair or a stroller has those little locks. Right. That that right. would make sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But even, you know, like, because even on a carpet, if you're trying to, even if you wanted to roll it on a carpet, you know, it might get stuck and tip over. So I don't know. Those are things that really, you know, would need to be looked into. And that's why, you know, highly recommend getting a trained professional to help you out with that. A lot of times, like if people have Medicare or stuff like that, you know, they have people that come out especially people that do walk with walkers and stuff like that. They mm -hmm. have, you know, um, physical therapists and stuff like that, um, OTs and stuff like that that come out and assess your home for trip hazards like rugs and different carpeting and stuff like that. And I'm sure one of them could help you um, assess mm -hmm. that possibility as well. Mm -hmm. I want to say one more thing about the ball. This is really a fascinating story. Um, uh, I knew a physical therapist actually in Atlanta. He was a friend of my husband. And he and I got to be kind of friends, you know, and communicate, especially as I was going through physical therapy school. And he had a practice where he specialized in, you know, an aging population. And he also had a lot of people with Parkinson's. And he taught a class once or twice a week, I can't remember. And I freaked out when he told me about this because I thought, oh, that's really kind of dangerous. Doing a ball class with these people who have Parkinson's. And he said, you know, they would come walking in, you know, with their shuffling gait. A lot of them had um, assistive devices and stuff. He says, once I put them on the ball and he would start playing music from like their era. Right. And all of a sudden they were bouncing on the ball. They were moving in ways they hadn't moved in years. He said it was just fascinating to watch. Music so it, is amazing, right? The music is amazing. And then the ability that they could move. And all I could think of was, you know, how many assistants did you have in there helping to spot them just in case? And he said, they, you know, they, they never fell. They never, you know, once they just were on the ball, they were good. So I thought that was really fascinating. It's amazing how the mind and the brain work. So there was something going on, you know, neurologically that um, just clicked in. And maybe it was the music, right? you know, that clicked into their younger days. I don't know. We have um, a new member of the HIP Senior. Her name is Lisa Peterson, and she does music therapy, and she works with, 
she goes around to different senior homes and has um, just like music hour where they come up with a theme for the week and whether it's joy or happiness or, or, you know, whatever it may be. And uh, she has books that they can sing from, you know, and she plays the accordion and he, uh, her partner in this plays uh, the guitar and they have usually, you know, somewhere between 10 and 15 people that join in um, and you can just see the happiness in their faces of being able to, to sing this. And there's been a few, um, uh, people within the hip senior that had questions about, um, you know, their loved ones being agitated during like getting dressed and stuff where she's recommended, you know, Hey, pay, play some of their favorite music. Um, we have another person that, uh, recently joined that does filming of people for, different, um, uh, if you know, like telling your life story type stuff. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I suggested to him to get with people like when they're first diagnosed with like dementia or Parkinson's or stuff like that, that down the road won't be able to express what their needs and likes are and to make videos of these are my favorite foods. These are my favorite music. This is stuff that I really like. Um, to keep people from moving forward, whether it be caregivers that possibly don't know this person or their loved ones to say like, this music is the music I really love, but this is the music that I really dislike. Please do not play this for me unless you absolutely hate me at the time because uh, I will be so agitated if someone played the Beatles while I can't express that I hate that song, you know? And so <laughs> doing stuff like that. And so it, it's important to know what those needs are. And I'm glad that uh, those people were able to enjoy that time using the balls and stuff. Now I've seen people using Cheryl the balls for like the drum things that have you seen have you seen that the drumming yeah I've I mean I've I've seen um, like pictures I've never seen a video of it yeah but I've go seen, on YouTube I've it's videos. fascinating like they'll come up with songs and they'll sit there and beat them and then they they do exercise with them from left to right you know like touch over here and touch over here and do this and touch down on the floor with the drumstick and they do like this whole exercise thing with them. So that looks really fun as well. Have you ever heard of Cogno movement? No, what's up? Oh, it's, it's another, it, that's, it just reminded me of it. It's another movement modality where they use like this, a movement ball, but it's more, it's small. It's not that they're sitting on it and they're actually moving it in different directions and different patterns to help activate different pathways in the brain. Uh, it's just fascinating. I interviewed somebody uh, who's a cognitive movement therapist uh, for my podcast a couple of months ago. Her name's Katie Wrigley and she's wonderful. And it was just a fascinating uh, conversation, but you know, it, it all is doing, all of these things are doing the same thing. Basically, they are activating neural pathways in ways that are so gentle and so non-intrusive, non-invasive, non-threatening. And these were things that even when I was going to school, you know, for physical therapy, we were told that that could never happen. You could not change the pathways in your brain that, you know, we were so hardwired that, um, you know, that whatever you had, you were stuck with for life. I'm glad I wanted that's my not money back. <laughs> I'm so glad that's not the case because I would be yeah. really screwed moving forward. <laughs> we all would be. So, yeah. all right. Well, Cheryl, anything else that you have? Because I think we're going to um, wrap this up and work on, what was it you said that we were going to work on next week? Oh, well, I wasn't sure if it was next week, but core strength. We can do that next time if you like. Yeah, absolutely. I think that would be um, a very necessary uh, thing for people um, and maybe start showing um, some of the things that they can do. Okay. One um, thing I do want to, before we uh, sign off, yeah. one thing that I would really recommend for the listeners, it, you don't have to learn anatomy. Okay. But you, you might want to just Google, you know, the skeletal structure and just start looking at pictures of the skeleton. Hey, you know, October's coming, Halloween, you see a lot of skeletons hanging around. Right. Look at the skeleton and just kind of see how beautifully arranged it is. And that that structure is meant to carry us through our entire lifetime. As long as we use it in the way that we stay in balanced and we're using those plumb lines to help us, not to defeat us. Ooh, to help us not defeat us. All right. So everybody grab a book, 
Um, if you missed it, I noticed that we had some watchers on that were not on earlier. If you missed it, go back to the beginning. Uh, you know, Cheryl's talking about, you know, using a book to, to make sure that you are, you know, you, you see this in the olden day, olden days, old days, a while back where, where people, you know, they used to teach young ladies to walk with, with a book on their head. And, and apparently it, it holds true to today and it doesn't matter what book it is. Just make sure it's not like a really big, thick, heavy book. That's going to, yeah, you don't want to, you don't want an encyclopedia, on your but I, one, one last thing too, yeah. once you get really good at sitting with a book on your head, getting up and down from a chair with a book on your head, walking with a book on your head, then start working on getting down to the floor with a book on your head. Woman, I got down on the floor to get to trim my dog's feet yesterday, and I just thought I was going to have a heart attack getting back up. It was so bad. So that's something I have to work on, just letting you know. Were you breathing? Was I breathing? Mm-hmm. Probably I'm kind not of, at I'm, some I'm, points. I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of guessing that you were holding your breath when, when the going got rough, but we can talk about that another time, too. I have too. arthritis in my knees, and the fact that I was on both of my knees at one point, A, was amazing, and B, was horrible. Um, and I used, uh, I have a big old fashioned sewing machine sitting right there. So I used that to, to get up. Um, but I think if it was carpet, it probably would have been easier, but I was like, oh my God, this hurts so bad. So, um, my stupid knees. So that's like I said, I have a lot of work to be done just like you guys. So that's why I want to create, um, a Facebook group and uh, get everybody involved and let's open this conversation and, and share with share share with cheryl um the the challenges that we're having right i am 53 i'm there with you guys uh you know what challenges are we having what problems um are do we need to solve how do we fix these problems um how do we not continue down this path because if i got any worse i don't want to live to 99 years old i just you know i'd, I'd be happy with 80 because it, it hurts to get older and we according to cheryl it doesn't have to and so uh we talked last week that this can be reversed that we can start being aware of these things and working on just like the book right i mean just alone that today made me realize like i'm looking down at my screen to create different things for the hip senior all day long my screen's mm -hmm. too low and I never even thought about it. I did ask Cheryl last week though, people are have their phones in their hands all day long and they're looking down at it. And and they've shown studies that we're starting to get humps in the back of, of, our, of our necks and our shoulders up here, our upper shoulders because of that. So, you know, get your phone up, be aware of what's going on around you or put it in your purse and put it away and wait till later when, when you're in a better place to do that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we talked today about staying aware of your of your uh, surroundings, being safe, um, good posture involved with that so that when you're walking down a grocery aisle or anywhere, right, you walk into a room, people are going to notice you, especially if you're trying to make a statement about that. Me, I'm always trying to make a statement about that. I am here. <laughs> I am here. I go so many few places these days that when I do go places, I want people to know it. But um, just being aware and being part of the conversation about all of this. So I'm probably today I have some time that I will create this. So we'll be able to um, announce this information. Um, so join our newsletter at thehipsenior.com so that I can get that information out to all of you as well about when that's going to be. Um, go to on, uh, livecommunity.online and register for this class. So when the next class is out, you will get an announcement in your email. Um, we only send out announcements for classes. We do not spam you. You're not going to get a ton of emails telling you every little minute thing all the time about stuff because I don't believe in that either. Just be part of the conversation and have a good time with us and get healthier and be stronger and... Um, Change, change your course of, of, of behavior as far as your health and we'll be doing a lot better. So I'm rambling. Cheryl, thank you so much for all of your wisdom today. We definitely appreciate it. And I look forward to uh, learning so much more from you. Thank you, Marianne.
we are back to this thing that will work. Okay. The recording has been stopped. Your recording has been stopped. <laughs> Wait, we're still live though. <laughs> Come on, Mouse. I thought that um, some people on live will appreciate this as well. Um, I thought it was my memory of my computer, which is maxed out at 16. And I had a, um, I really hate my computer today. Um, <laughs> seriously. Um, We might have to stop live streaming and just record these. Um, I mean, as far as like for Facebook and stuff, because I can't even get my mouse down to end the live stream. So if you're watching still, hi, how are you? It's good to have you here. <laughs> um, Char was here, Simpson. Um, she said, thank you both. You're welcome. Um, so I thought it was, what I thought the problem was, was that the... Um, yeah, sure. I agree. Computers and Mondays. It's always it's always a thing with me on Mondays. She's still on here. This is funny. Um, we might just have to stay on live. Forget going to the dojo today. <laughs> no, I need to beat some men up today. I got some guys I want to get my hands on. <laughs> that didn't sound right, did it? <laughs> no. That did not sound good. <laughs> My mouse will not move. Wait, wait, it's close. I was like this close and now it's like farther away. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't know. I thought it was um, my memory, which I still think it is. Um, and then I found out that I had a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connector plugged in. And I thought that was giving it grief, um, contrasting with it. And so, um, hold on. I'm almost there. It's like there. Okay. Bye guys on live. See you next time. Oh, now I got to go to end. Now I got to get way up there again. This is so funny. It's a good thing I edit these videos for, for YouTube. Um, the, um, I thought it was contrasting, but it wasn't. It was um, apparently because, so now I'm like, okay, is it my internet? Like, do I not have a fast enough upload speed? Um, mm. for for that and do i need to switch over to at&t like their uh fiber whatever but when i moved technology in here, yeah when i moved in here i tried to do that and we are still live it's like an a come on mouse <laughs> i told you lame i'm lame um when I moved in here, I tried to order AT&T Live and it took them over three weeks to, now I'm on a different screen, to come out and finally put in and somebody had cut the wire, the the fiber, so they couldn't do that and I just told them they were lame too. And Oh, you might have to call them back. Yeah, I might have to plug in a, a wired mouse for doing lives though because this is ridiculous that I cannot end this live. I'm not going to be here all day. No, you can leave. I would just be here. Oh, because I was going to say, yeah, uh, yeah, I can get my ball and show you a few things, but. I, um, I definitely need to go downstairs and get my ball because I'm, I don't know if the, the height has worked with this table before, but I was on a wood floor. We're still live, by the way. Um, fuck, freaking A. Um, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Um, why couldn't it just end it when I hit lot end? Like, just take, believe me. Just believe Don't me. ask me. I am definitely not a um, very technically savvy. Obviously, I'm better than I used to be if I have a podcast and such, but still. Ugh. We need to put your... Um... This is ridiculous. Um, control alt delete. Maybe that'll do it. No, we need to put your podcast on your book listing. 
Hey, by uh, the way, check out Cheryl's uh, podcast. I've had some really amazing people lately um, regarding health and wellness. That's just fascinating. Um, a physician who was a, he's a retired orthopedic surgeon who ended up, you know, just like walking away from that and starting the functional um, medicine practice, which focuses on bone health and preventing bone loss rather than trying to put them back together after they break. Wow. <gasps> Bye guys. Oh no. It, it's what's happening is it's jumping. It'll be like on there and then it jumps like three inches away. I almost said 10 feet and I realized that that was a pretty unrealistic. Yeah. That's, that's a long ways. Yeah. It's like over at my neighbor's house. Like what? <laughs> this is ridiculous. So, um, I told you I'm lame. If you're still here live with us, I do need to, to go, you, I do need to get going though. If y'all want to donate to a new computer for me that has like a hundred gigs of memory, that would probably be beneficial. So yeah, do your thing. I will. <gasps> we are not live anymore. <laughs> not live anymore? No, I'll definitely have to go in and edit that. And... Okay. All right. So I'm just going to sign off. I guess I just. Yeah. Just, just close the window. Okay. Sorry. Well, it's good talking to you. You too. Thank you so much for being right. part of, of my lameness because I told you, I don't know why you defended me in the beginning. Cause I was like, I am totally lame today. I don't, <laughs> I was like, maybe I cursed it. I was like, I'm doing, yeah, it's your fault, Cheryl. It's one. It's my fault. Oh, come on. Everything's my fault. You didn't know that global warming, the situation in the middle East, menstrual cramps, you name it. I'm my fault. See, when I was younger, that was all my brother's fault, not menstrual camps. Maybe it was. I don't know. But he mm -hmm. went, He was in the Navy, and he joined um, um, the nuclear field. And everyone was, and we were like, man, Warren, they're going to say don't hit that red button, and you're going to hit that red button and blow the world up. Um, Apparently he didn't. No. But we were determined that he would. Everything was always Warren's fault, like um, – yeah, you know, something went wrong. We just blamed Warren, you know, like I was hiding from Warren, hid behind a chair, went to go get up, used my hands to push myself up like that. You know, like when you're a kid, like you do on the floor and I broke my finger and, and I blamed Warren. It was Warren. his fault. I was like, yeah. it's Warren's fault. I was hiding from him. So. It's it was hilarious. Fault. All right. Well, I'm signing off. I'm going to go find some men to smack around. I think I need to do that too. That sounds like such a good idea. It feels good. It feels real good. Can you be overweight and and still start on doing, like, going to the dojo and doing stuff like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's actually how you can help start, you know, getting the weight off. I don't know if I would start with a dojo. I would start with something a little bit more gentle, maybe like Tai Chi. Okay. Or even yoga. I don't like yoga. It just never, it never resonated with me, but um, yeah, that's what I would, I would start looking into just something, you know, a gentle look for something for people over 50. Start there. I know. Maybe I'll just go get my yoga ball. I mean, maybe I'll just go get my ball out of the closet to start with. Start there. Just start. All right. I will, um, like I said, I will get that uh, page for um, for Facebook created today. I'll tag you in it and okay. see what if we can get some movement going in that. Because, I mean, we had probably 10 people in and out on Facebook, but they weren't staying. So mm -hmm. um, maybe if we can get some a community created around it, um, they'll get us more viewership. So Sounds good. Thank you for being here. All awesome. right. Well, I you, hope you have a great day. You too. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.
your chicken. <gasps> see your see your new chicken? <gasps> oh, get your chicken. You wanna play? I'll throw it for you. No? Hey, come on. Are you upset about your butt? love of God.
What are these? Oh, it's bridges. 